All right, guys, today we're gonna start a series. We're building this core box, which is for uh, the Atlas, uh, get my parts all oriented here, right? This is for the Atlas 10F. So this is a brand new compound slide castings we're gonna be making. Uh, if anybody has ever looked at very many used lathes, uh, the compound slide is always getting tore up. And on these ones here, you know, they're getting to be about 60 years old, so there's been probably a lot of mistakes happened over the years. Anyway, let's get in the shop and let's build this thing. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. All right, so I've uh, figured out and marked where I need the end of my core box to be, so I'm gonna have a nice accurate cut here, so I'm gonna use my miter box. This saw blade has about had it. This is a induction hardened blade, and uh, as far as I know, there's no way to sharpen that. So once the saw is worn out, it's just done. One day I'll find a nice vintage saw that I can sharpen. All right, there we have it. Two perfect uh, halves of a core box. So I suppose technically this would be a quarter box. If you were making kind of like a half cylinder shape, it would be just like this. It could be a solid piece. It doesn't have to have a split line at all because it'll come out straight through here. But this, this thing ain't gonna work that well. So we have to split it in two pieces. Sometimes these core boxes, they get so complicated, it's like a puzzle, putting them together and taking them apart. Uh, but you can make very complicated shapes with these. All right, let's go find some dowels and put that in there. We're almost done here. We're coming into the home stretch. All right, guys, so we've got it all sawn apart. Got the holes all drilled now. And these holes, uh, they only go in there, I don't know, just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, maybe not very far. So let's see here, just for kicks. Eh, approximately a quarter inch. Not very deep. They don't need to go in there very deep. But one of the perks of uh, clamping this all together and drilling all the way through like this, um, let's say if you know, we drilled it this way, uh, if my spindle was angled this way and we were drilling a little bit of an angle, well, at least they're all gonna match the same. So it may slide in at an angle, but it will slide in and actually seat be just right. And there's a nice little trick we can do right here. I've already cut these dowels to length, put them in there, and just marked them with a marking knife. So we can glue it coming in from this side. Oh, I'm just gonna leave it sticking out a little ways here. Let's see, get the nicest ends in there. Doesn't matter too much. All right. And these are just, yeah, they kind of grab and tilt a little bit so it's not super sharp right there. Probably be okay. I'll make sure to put glue further down on that one. So we can glue it up and then just slide them in, and no glue will protrude on this side, so we don't run the risk of getting any glue fouling up our joint. Uh, or if you were to put it together, you know, because it would be kind of nice to test it here, right? We don't need a ton of glue here. That's probably enough for all. side here. Perfect. There's no glue anywhere on there. Too far in. And 
in. I do want to kind of check them. And I'm just going to slide it together. Leave it like that. If I pull it out, uh, these dowels kind of want to stay on the other side. You may mess up the alignment of these dowels, so I'm just going to just going to let this dry for a little bit. Call that good. In the meantime, when we are packing sand in here, we need this to be flat. So I've got a piece of wood here. You need to just make a couple of caps, go on both ends, and they'll be the same way. They'll be doweled. Uh, that way this whole box can just be sort of slipped together and probably they can just put a clamp around it like this. Maybe they might want to clamp one this way too, I don't know. That's how well it, you know, it snugs up good. And I think we'll be done with this. He's going to put a coat of paint on it and uh, that'll slick it up really nice. So it should be pretty much good to go. All right, let's slice this one off. We're going to make two of them just the same. I'll spare you all the details. You can see we're uh, using some sort of second rate wood here, but this is the side that really matters, the side out here. Probably I'll fill that with a little bit of putty, but just to make it flat. So we need two of those. Precision is not preeminent right here. The only surface that's really going to matter is where it mates to the end of the core box and the top surface that it should be nice and even with that. The saw, I think it's supposed to have about a eight degree angle on the front of the tooth and I sharpened it where it's almost 90 degrees and it'll cut super super fine and smooth that way but it's a little grabby so you can't apply any pressure at all down there. I guess in the 1800s, this style of uh, sawtooth was very popular. Uh, I think it was Diston who probably later on realized that if you angle the leading edge of the tooth back a little bit, it'll start a little easier. It'll tend to bump over instead of just catching and digging right in. But if you learn to saw with this, th this will make you have very good technique. If you don't have a good technique, you're going to really struggle with it. All right. Off camera, I'm gonna go uh, clean these up, plane them to shape, drill the holes, and then uh, put the pegs in. And we'll show you the box completed. We've drilled these and glued in some pegs, so you can see how the pegs go in. And uh, you can see right here, I put a little chisel mark, a match mark there. On this side, I put two of them and the dowel spacings are different on this side so it's going to be really easy to keep from mixing this stuff up. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. huh? It'll slide out real nice. Those ones fit really good in there. And there's the core box all opened up. Now I'm going to send this off to Mississippi, my buddy Clark, and he is going to do the last little bit. He's going to, he's got some kind of paint that he wants to paint this with, but uh, then we'll be manufacturing uh, compound slides for the Atlas 10F. Alright guys, if you enjoy these kind of videos, you like seeing machines being resurrected, pulled out of the scrap yard, uh, why don't you consider subscribing and uh, maybe even support my Patreon channel. Uh, it'll certainly help pay for all the little supplies and stuff that I need. And it doesn't take much, you know, every little bit helps. See you guys around.